Good evening. Uh, welcome to our live stream tonight, and I hope you all had a great day. And uh, I'll just give you guys a few more minutes to see a few more people logged in. I see a couple of you have logged on already. I'm glad that you've joined. And uh, I hope that you'll find this evening um, this challenge encouraging that will help us um, out in our Christian walks. I'm going to be um, recapping a bit of what I spoke about on uh, Sunday night and then just moving in onto the rest of uh, what I had shared, um, the verse after and verse number eight in Philippians. So if you're uh, here this evening and you're ready and you have uh, your Bible, we're going to be reading from Philippians chapter four this evening once again. Philippians chapter four as we uh, turn our attention to God's word. And I hope that you have been uh, taking this time that we have, extra time we have at home, uh, to focus on uh, the Word of God, focus on what uh, God has for us in His Word, what He has for us during these days that will help us in our Christian walk, and that we're just drawing closer to the Lord at these times, and that you are exploring uh, the Word. Philippians chapter 4 this evening, and I'll be reading verses 4 to 8, and we'll be focusing on verse number 8 tonight. So the Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And that's the phrase I've been focusing on. Um, I shared it with you on uh, Sunday morning and then as well tonight I'm going to be looking at the idea of think on these things. So we, on Sunday morning, we focus on verses uh, 4 to uh, 7 and I'm just going to read recap quickly uh, what the Apostle Paul uh, is sharing here with the church at Philippi. So verse number four, where he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. It's pretty clear. He's saying rejoice always in the Lord. And it's not determined by circumstance, because it'd be one thing if Paul says rejoice always. But that's not what it says. It says rejoice in the Lord always. And we can always rely on God, his his character never changes, nothing about him changes, and we can always rejoice in the fact that we, we know him and that he doesn't change and that he's always there for us. So we see rejoice always in the Lord. Verse number five, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. So Paul here is saying, let, your, let all your being, let uh, our emotions, let our reactions, let our responses, let our demeanor, let all those things be gentle. Let them be that of someone who is trusting God, um, someone who knows that the Lord is right there with them. Uh, Paul had a good understanding of this because when he was uh, arrested, whether he was in jail or he was in prison or he was on house arrest and he was uh, had someone guarding over him, he was in custody and he was under the watch of a soldier or a guard. That's the same idea that Paul is using here when he says, um, or sorry, that when he's trusting God during these times, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself here, when Paul was in uh, custody, when he was in uh, situations where um, maybe he was shipwrecked or he was going through something, he was always trying to present uh, a gentle demeanor, his reactions, his emotions, his responses, based on the fact that he knew that God was always with him, that the Lord was always uh, with him. So we need to make sure that we are doing that in our lives. Let that be known to men. It says, let your moderation be known unto all men. Let all of our being be that of a gentle and meek spirit because we know that the Lord is with us. Then verse number six, we see, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So this is a, a great verse. It's basically saying, don't worry about anything. Don't let the worries of this life take control, don't think about those things. Don't worry about a single thing, but on the flip side, pray about everything. And that's what 
Paul was encouraging the believers then and encouraging us today through the word. Pray about everything. And then verse number seven, uh, we see the result of this, of um, if we are to follow this, it says, and the peace of God. So we see that the result is the peace of God, which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So the result of not worrying, focusing on uh, God, praying about everything is peace. We will have peace. Uh, the peace of God will keep us, keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And that, that's what I was, uh, I was getting ahead of myself earlier where uh, when Paul used that word, it's the same idea of keeping where Paul was in custody under the watch of a jailer or a guard. That same word keep is that of um, the peace of God which is going to keep our hearts and minds. It's going to guard over that. It's going to watch over that. It's going to take care of those things. So Paul has given us this list of things to do to find this peace. And I hope that you are uh, seeking peace. You're looking to the word of God. You're looking to what God has for us, not trying to find peace in other things, but find true peace through Jesus Christ. So Paul has given us this list of things to do. And these things in the, in of themselves are really impossible you know if Paul was to say rejoice always we'd be like we is it really can we really rejoice always but everything that Paul has challenged us to do we see that is through Jesus Christ it's all done through Jesus Christ with his help you know through Jesus Christ we're going to rejoice rejoice in the Lord always we're going to rejoice in him, not in our circumstances, not in the things going on around us, not in our own strength and abilities. We're rejoicing in the Lord. So it's done through Jesus Christ. When he goes on in verse number five about lettering our moderation be known, we're going to be calm. We're going to be gentle. We're going to be grounded. And we're not doing this, once again, of our own uh, strength and abilities, but rather we're going to let our moderation, we're going to be gentle because the Lord is at hand. We know that God is near. He's with us and he's watching over us. So we can do that through Jesus Christ. Then he goes on to say, don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Let, basically let God know your requests. He says, let your requests be made known unto God. You know, we take what we typically, what we're going to worry about, we put those aside because we're going to go to God. We're going to go to him in prayer. We're going to uh, bring our worries and concerns, our request unto God. So that is done through Jesus Christ. And then we see that this peace of God, which we can't even, the way Paul describes it, a peace um, which passeth all understanding. So when it's basically he's saying this peace that we can't even comprehend, a peace that we can't find in this world, only through God, that peace is going to keep our hearts and our minds. And we see, what do we see? It says, through Jesus Christ, or through, um, through Christ Jesus. So it's all done through our Savior. So you want peace? Paul says, do these things through Jesus Christ. You know, we're used to trying to find peace on our own, make things right on our own, uh, do things that, that calm ourselves and, and that we can be in control of, and we think that is peace. But that's not the way we're supposed to do it. That's, that's what the world does. They try to uh, take, bring things into their own control so they can try to find some sort of their own version of peace. But we see that this doesn't work. So not only if we do things the way Paul has laid it out, not only are, is the Lord going to help us, you know, all these things that Paul has challenged us to do is through uh, Christ Jesus, but as well the peace that is provided to us is through Christ Jesus as well. It's all in the Lord's hands, not our own. So we see all of this, and we've talked about all of this. God is providing this perfect peace. But as we continue on and get to verse number eight, we want to straight stay on track. You know, we want to keep focus. We want to make sure that we're trying to uh, rejoice always and that we're trying to be calm and grounded and gentle. We're trying not to worry and trying to pray about everything. So how do we keep on track? Well, Paul here says in verse number eight, he gives us a list of things. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. 
If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So we see that phrase at the end, think on these things. We need to think. You know, these last few weeks, and we've had a lot more time at home, a lot more time to ourselves, and um, the busyness of life has come to a halt, and we're trying to um, focus on things. So we've had a lot of time to think. And sometimes we, sometimes we stress think. Um, you know, those are the things that keep us up at nighttime. You know, we're, we're in bed and you're laying there. Maybe you woke up very early because your mind is so filled with things you're, that you're thinking of, things that sh are stressing you out, things that we can't shut our mind off because uh, we're still trying to find our own peace. We're trying to uh, keep control. You know, you imagine uh, someone trying to fight the, the, the ship. They're trying to steer that ship. When God is saying, you know, give me control, we're trying to hold on to that um, to that wheel and we're trying to keep control and we're stressing about these things rather than giving God control. But Paul here, he says, think on these things. Think. We, we're supposed to think, but think on these things. So at this point, we're, we're switching from stressful thinking, thinking of trying to fix things on our own, thinking of trying to be in control, and we're switching over to um, biblical thinking. Everything Paul has challenged us to do, I mentioned before, is done through Jesus Christ. Um, we can't start now all of a sudden thinking on bad things. You know, if we really want that peace of God, we want God to be in, in control, we want to have that perfect peace, we need to keep our mind right. We need to think on these things. So rather than letting our mind slip back to... Uh, bad thoughts or uh, thoughts that aren't towards Christ, we can't do that and expect something good. And, you know, this, this isn't about positive thinking, you know, think good thoughts. <laughs> That's not what we're talking about here, because everything that we're doing, it's all done because we have the Lord's help. We have uh, Christ living in us. Um, Paul goes on to talk about this later on, a very familiar uh, passage of scripture in um, Philippians 4, just a few verses ahead, verse number 13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. So when we, we're seeing this and, and uh, we're trying to follow what Paul is saying, rejoice in the Lord, be uh, gentle, let our moderation be known, don't worry, pray about all things. And then we get to verse 8, and he says, think on these things. Well, once again, this isn't going to be in our own strength. You know, this is, the, this is the thinking we're trying to get rid of. You know, that control that we're trying to let go of, this is all done through Jesus Christ. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. So I'm going to look at uh, verse number 8, break this verse no, uh, down. Um, so what the first thing we see is whatsoever things are true. Things that are true. Um, this is the idea of loving truth, speaking truth letting our character be true. Um, when, when we're, when we're uh, focusing on what we're thinking about, um, we need to ask ourselves, is this true? Is this information that I can rely upon? Is this a thought that I can rely upon? Or is this something that um, is unstable, un, uh, not grounded in the truth of the scripture, not grounded in what God is telling us? Basically, don't let anything come into your thought life and and consciously dwell there you know you're purposely thinking on this you know don't dwell on it don't let it be a thought don't let it become a, a part of your your thought pattern um, if it's not true what we need to do is think on truth and what is truth well first of all the bible is the prime source of truth um, john 17 17 christ says Sanct sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth and that's that should be our main focus. That should be, um, that's that's the truth that we have, the truth of the Word of God. So when we're um, trying to process thoughts in our minds, we need to think: are are the things that are going on in my head, are the things that I'm putting in, the things that are coming into my mind, is that true? Whatsoever things are true, think on these things. Then he goes on to say, whatsoever things are honest. Um, that word honest is speaking about honorable so things that are honorable 
are your thoughts honorable? And that uh, carries the idea of, um, are they honoring to yourself? So are the thoughts or the things that are coming to your mind, are they worthy of your respect? Um, are they gonna bring uh, praise to God? Or are they things that aren't worth our time? You know, there's a lot of things that um, they're not necessarily bad thoughts in a vile way, but rather they're bad in that they're, um, they're far-fetched thoughts, they're silly thoughts, they're meaningless thoughts, they're, um, they're not worth um, anything, they're not worth our thoughts, you know, they're not worth pushing out the truth of the Word of God, pushing out Jesus Christ because they're worthless, they're not honorable to ourselves, our thoughts, or in, in, in turn, in ultimately the end, not honorable to uh, God because they're uh, taking away from the truth that should be in our mind. So don't waste your thoughts on unnecessary or unhonorable things that aren't worth your time. Then we see whatsoever things are just. So this is uh, the idea of righteous things. Um, it gives us the idea of something that's straight rather than something that's crooked. So not crooked thoughts, but we're thinking righteous things. We're thinking just things. We're thinking on righteous things, not unrighteousness. Whatsoever things are pure. So that word pure, it means free of contamination. Um, so that word would have been used um, speaking of uh, sacrifices. So when you're thinking about the Old Testament, people doing sacrifices or using things for worship, you know, are those things pure? Are they free of contamination? So you think of sacrificing um, an animal or the lamb. They were to find a spotless lamb, something that was unblemished, unmarked. It was um, something that was pure. It was good enough to be used for worship. It was good enough to be uh, offered to God. So we know that everything in our life should be honoring to God. Um, 1 Corinthians 10.31, it says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. So everything that we do should be glorifying to God. So in fact, the thoughts in our mind, they should be glorifying to God. Everything. So um, whatsoever things are pure, when Paul is saying think on these things, don't let thoughts in your mind that don't glorify God. They ought to be things in our mind that are pure. Things that are, are um, if we're, letting things to our mind, whether it's things we're reading, things we're watching, things we're listening to, are those things we're putting to our mind, filling our minds with, are they pure things that are glorifying the God? Because everything we do ought to be glorifying to Him. So don't let thoughts in your mind that don't glorify God. And then we see whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are lovely. This is the idea of causing you to love, or um, this word, uh, lovely is a combination of the words that make up towards love. So do the thoughts that are in your mind that are dwelling there, is it causing you to love? Is, is there something that comes into your mind that causes you to um, maybe criticize or not love, but rather push apart, um, strain on uh, a relationship or bring division between two people? Then those thoughts are wrong. Our thoughts ought to be moving us towards love. And ultimately, that love should be Christ's love. It should be bring us close together. Thoughts of love, things that are pure, things that if we're, um, if we're indwelled by Christ, if we're thinking of Christ's love and um, our relationship with him, that's going to bring us closer to him. And as well, it's going to bring us closer together with others who are thinking on Jesus Christ. So whatsoever things are lovely, is it moving us toward love? And then we see whatsoever things are, uh, are of good report. Good report. That is the idea of something that uh, sounds good. It's something that is highly, or someone that's highly regarded, well thought of. So with our thoughts, especially in these last uh, few weeks, are we listening to something of good report? Are we... Uh, thinking of something that is highly regarded, or are we just um, listening to gossip? Are we listening to things that are 
false, things that are exaggerated, things that aren't um, aren't uh, things towards God. You know, gossips, people who gossip, love gossip. So they love to listen to things that are not of good report. So what are the thoughts on your mind? Are we thinking of things that are pure and honest and true? Or are we thinking of things that are not of good report, things that are false, things that are, aren't worthy of our thoughts, things that aren't going to help us focus on Jesus Christ, which who is going to help us through this, who is going to bring us that peace. And then Paul goes on to say, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So that idea of if there be any virtue, is there, if there's any goodness, if there's any modesty, if there's any purity, if there's any praise that is due to the Lord, think on these things. And that's the idea of concentrating, considering, uh, meditating upon truth, things that are, Paul has listed here in this passage. You know, we need to be so careful what we're filling with our minds with, especially in these days where we're at home, um, there's a lot of uncertainty in the world. There's a lot of questions, a lot of things that aren't, aren't answered. You know, everyone's excited to see friends and family and be back at church, but where's the end? We don't know where the end is. So that, that brings us to the level of uncertainty. Um, just being at home, the thoughts that are going on and um, the emotions that we're going through of being um, of isolating and um, it's just taking a toll on us. But we need to be making sure that um, we're thinking on the right things, that we're not filling our minds with, um, with garbage, with um, things that don't fall into this list of biblical thinking. Um, there's a lot of false information that's going on out there right now, a lot of false theories, a lot of things that aren't, aren't, aren't honorable thoughts, things that aren't worthy of our time. We, we, we should be focusing on things that are worthy, things uh, that are founded based on uh, biblical truths. Our, our thoughts should be towards our Savior. Um, this week, as we uh, get ready to celebrate Easter, our thoughts should be to our Savior who came to this earth to die for us. And I hope that you're considering this week, uh, these days, as we uh, get closer to, the, to Friday um, or to Resurrection Sunday, um, let me encourage you, if you haven't, didn't watch uh, Pastors Live from Sunday night, after I'm finished here, go uh, to the Facebook page and watch Pastors Live from Sunday night. He answers a lot of questions um, that have been um, brought up, and he, he gives you biblical answers. He gives you truth to think on because it comes from the Word of God. So let me encourage you to do that. Let's not fill our minds with things that aren't honorable, that aren't true, that aren't worthy of our time, but rather things that are glorifying to God, things that are based on Scripture. Let's focus on Jesus Christ more than we ever have, and let's draw closer to Him. So let Him help us, just like Paul as he goes through uh, these verses that we read from verses 4 to 8. And um, Lord willing, on Thursday, I'll continue on uh, through um, this chapter and see what Paul continues to say. But what we've read thus far, everything that Paul has challenged us to do, it is with the help of Jesus. He's the one who's helping us and giving us uh, this peace. So let's focus on him. Let's think on these things. So I hope that you'll take this into account. I hope that you'll uh, meditate on this passage of scripture, read through Philippians, read through chapter four, and let's make sure that our thoughts are right. Uh, towards things that are are glorifying to God. Um, let me remind you, church family, uh, let's be encouragement to one another. Let's be praying for one another. Um, let's be uh, excited for Easter. It's coming quickly. And like I said, let's, uh, let's be in the scriptures. Let's be following along with what the word of God says throughout this week. Let's follow along with that. Let's let our minds be focused on our Savior. Um, if you, if you haven't noticed already, or if you want to take a look after this, if you go to the church uh, Facebook page, we've created an, an event. And on this event, it advertises our um, Good Friday service and our uh, Sunday service as well. And you can go ahead, you can share that, you can invite your friends, and uh, you can go ahead and uh, 
say that you're going to be coming. That helps um, reach other people who see the event. And um, it's a great opportunity, a great tool that we're using during this time to try to reach our community. Uh, so hopefully we get uh, a good turnout, but please join us. Uh, and we'll talk more about this as it gets closer, but uh, join us. Already prepare for uh, Friday for our uh, Good Friday service at 1030. And then uh, Sunday as well, 10 a.m., we'll be having our Easter services. Be a little bit different this year, but nonetheless, we're very excited uh, to celebrate the resurrection of our Savior. Uh, so please take time uh, to do that. And um, we're praying for you guys. Once again, let us know if there's any prayer requests that you guys have so we can pray for you guys. And um, we look forward to seeing you guys. Once again, we'll be back Thursday night. And uh, we're praying for you guys. We love you guys. We're thinking of you. And uh, we hope that you have a great rest of your night. And uh, make sure that we're filling our minds with the things that are glorifying to God. So God bless and take care.